Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a square wave to sine wave converter circuit. And I've built it on my breadboard. It uses one IC. It's a CD4018. And that's a 4000 series CMOS logic IC. Now this IC is a divide by N counter. And we're going to configure this counter as a divide by 10 ring counter. So as we input a square wave into the circuit, say from a microcontroller, GPIO, it will output a digital sine wave. So it will be a chunky sine wave and then we could filter it using this simple RC filter. So basically it's a, a digital to analog converter using four resistors and we're going to build a chunky uh, sine wave output and then we're going to filter out the harmonics with an RC filter and we're going to get a sine wave output. Okay, anytime we have a step voltage like in a square wave we create harmonics. Now a square wave is rich in harmonics and if you look at the diagram we can see a square wave is made up of many sine waves. So if we have a 1 kilohertz square wave signal it's composed of a 1 kilohertz sine wave fundamental with many odd harmonics mixed to make a square wave. So if we want to extract that pure sine wave we have to filter out all the odd harmonics which is pretty hard to do. Once we do that, we'll be left with a distorted sine wave. So it's better to have a chunky sine wave. And then we could easily strip off the odd harmonics. Okay, here's the output of my square wave to sine wave circuit. And you can see a chunky 1 kilohertz sine wave. Now this is before the low pass RC filter. So the input to the circuit is 10 kilohertz square wave. And the ring counter divides that by 10. So the output is a 1 kilohertz chunky sine wave. Now if you look at the fast Fourier transform of this output, you can see the fundamental 1 kilohertz and you can see all the odd harmonics and they're pretty strong. Now if I apply the RC low pass filter to the circuit now and we have a look at the fast Fourier transform, you can see the odd harmonics have been, have been cut out and we're pretty well left with the fundamental 1 kilohertz. So that's our 1 kilohertz sine wave output. Okay, here's a circuit that I built in my breadboard my square wave to sine wave converter using a 4018 as a ring counter divide by 10. So it's powered by 5 volts into pin 16 and the input clock pin 14 I'm feeding a 10 kilohertz square wave signal and I'll get a 1 kilohertz sine wave output. Now at my four DAC resistors, my digital to analog converter resistors, the two outer ones are 35.7K and the two inner ones are 22.1K. Now these are 1% precision resistors you probably don't have them in your parts bin. So I substituted the 22.1K for 22K and the 35.7K. I used a 33K in series with a 2.2K. But if you're going to build a circuit, it's good to use these values for a cleaner sine wave output. Now at this point here, we'll have our chunky sine wave. And then we'll go through this low pass filter, a 10K and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, and will give us our clean 1 kilohertz sine wave output. Okay, next we're going to have a look at the operation of the circuit. And if you look at the left, you can see a truth table of the counter, the ring counter. So these are the 10 steps that it goes through, then it repeats because it's a ring counter. If you look at the schematic, because pin 13, that's Q5, is fed back into the input, it's going to cause it to become a ring counter and divide by 10, and it's just going to circulate. So on each clock input, it's going to clock through this truth table. So if we start at the top, 1100, zero, zero, so that means it will be 1100. Zero, zero. So we'll have 5 volts on these two resistors, and we'll have 0 on these two resistors. And if we redraw that, it's going to look like this for the first clock. And if we calculate the resistors, we're going to have a voltage divider with 2.5 volts. Now we go to the next clock, 1110. One, one, so it'll be 1, 1, 1, 0. So these three resistors will have highs on it, 5 volts on, on, on each leg. And this resistor will have a low. And if we redraw that, there's our three resistors with the one on the bottom. And if we calculate the voltage divide, we'll have 4.04 .04 volts. Now in the next clock, it's 1, 1, 1, 1. So they're all in parallel, so we'll have 5 volts. So you can see there's our 2.5 volts. That's the zero crossing. That would be uh, right there at the zero crossing. It starts at 2.5 volts and it's starting to increase. It's going up to 4.04. .04. 
then it's hitting 5 volts at the peak. You can see right here, 5 volts. And it does it again. You can see it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So we're going to have two clocks at that peak. Now if we, if we follow through the whole truth table and do the calculations, you can see we're going to get a chunky waveform. And there's going to be 10 clocks per period to give us a 1 kilohertz output. Okay, so now you know how to generate sine waves from square waves. And in some applications, it's okay to use the GPIO or Yumeka controller to create uh, square waves to drive, say, a piezo speaker or a normal speaker to generate feedback uh, from your project, from your microcontroller. And I'll show you a couple examples uh, of that. So I could generate a beep. So this will be a beep. Now there's another one. It's called a bip. So that, that's the one I would use each time I press a key. I would get a little bip. And I could generate a ring to get your attention. Or I could generate uh, a siren for some kind of alarm. Now in some projects, we have to use pure sine wave signaling so the circuit will meet certain specifications. So this circuit here is an FSK generator. So it's, a, it's basically a modem which generates mark and space frequencies that are being sent over a radio or down a phone line. So here's my 4018 ICs, and here's my four precision resistors, and here's my RC low-pass filter. And it's clocked by an oscillator, which is crystal controlled, so it's very accurate. So we're sending mark space tones over a radio. If we use square waves, we'll create a lot of sidebands in the radio channel, and it'll exceed the bandwidth of the, of the radio channel, and we could cause interference and uh, a lot of distortion. Also, the bandwidth of a phone line is only 300 to 3,000 hertz. So if you use square wave signaling, we'll exceed the bandwidth of the phone line and we'll get lots of distortion. So in some projects, we have to use uh, sine waves so we can meet certain specifications of the project.